we're going to take a look at the pattern brush in Adobe Illustrator and we're going to be using some elements from the Go Media Arsenal set 8 decorative 2 as well as set 4 currency ornaments and I've got my first Go Media swirl right here from set 8 and I'm just going to make some modifications to it to help me get uh, an extremely unique and intricate pattern going. Copy this, Apple C, I'm going to paste it in front, Apple F. Um, by pasting it in front, I now have two images. You can also paste in front through the menu. And I'm going to get rid of the stroke and fill it with white. And throw a black rectangle. behind my swirl there. Tighten this up. It's important to remember that when you're going to make a pattern, your edges need to line up seamlessly. So as you make your pattern, you'll want it to be able to flow. Go ahead and select everything that you're making a pattern out of. That was important to make sure it is selected. Go over to your brushes click this little down arrow new brush new pattern brush OK give it a name go media swirl one and these are the default settings and we're just going to leave them there for now so now you can see that we have our custom pattern brush over here Go Media Swirl 1, as we named it. And let's apply it to something. Oops. And boom. Not bad. I adjusted my stroke size to 0.5 and you can see that it has added more elements around the sphere um, and you can play with those settings to get uh, whatever you like out of that go smaller or larger either way I think I'm gonna leave it here for now and we have successfully applied our first pattern. Now we're going to take a look at making a pattern that does not seamlessly line up uh, the way our first pattern did. And I took time to just kind of draw this random shape here. Um, but you could use something as simple as um, this almost diamond-like shape. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at what this will create when we make a pattern out of it. So we'll select everything that I want um, to be part of my pattern brush and then we'll repeat the steps from before. Click this down arrow, new brush, new pattern brush, OK, custom pattern. And we'll leave the default settings again. Now we will make a sphere and apply our new brush to the sphere. And whoa, look at the way it has treated this image. Looks pretty cool, actually. And we can adjust that the way we adjusted the first one. Let's cut it in half, 0.5. And that looks pretty sick. But we still have some overlap and some adjusting to do there. So you can see, though, the power behind this pattern brush and some of the things that can be accomplished with it. And 
imagine trying to draw that on your own. No thank you. Okay, now I want to get really intricate with my pattern. So I will combine different parts of these three shapes here from the set eight, decorative two. And um, it took me a little bit of time to come up with uh, this type of a shape. So I'm not going to bore you um, by having you watch me combine these different elements, but I will uh, point them out to you. Uh, these three pieces I ended up just drawing in with the pen tool but uh, these pieces right here were a combination out of this little swirl um, these are exactly those just flipped vertical and then these two bottom pieces were taken from down here um, I will give you a little bit of a tip here um, is how I got this nice straight edge because remember when I'm designing for a pattern I need it to uh, line up seamlessly the way this one does so what you can do is draw a rectangle there select your two images and then uh, in your pathfinder um, you can choose from different settings and what happens is this great effect where you can see this edge is cut off and if I actually expand it uh, that's what I needed to do here then I've got a nice edge that will line up um, and you just need to do the work on the other side uh, to make it seamless so uh, once you've created now your own new intricate pattern, we can go through the same steps that we've done before. Select all of it, and small little down arrow there. Click that, new brush, new pattern brush, okay, new intricate brush. is popped into our window over here once again to an ellipse and let's go ahead and apply that and that's rather huge and that's pretty amazing I absolutely love the pattern brush because there's no way in the world I could ever do that pattern on my own and that's looking pretty cool I want to continue with a few more brushes uh, before we move on um, just to finish off this pattern and make it even more intricate so uh, what I've done here is I've just used um, these elements directly from set 8 and then drawn my own lines um, and I will create a new brush the way we've done before same settings default settings um, okay and we have our new brush there we'll draw another circle and this should give it the look of a nice border again that is humongous just the size there make that point two and I really like the way that's looking and then one last fairly simple brush let's do there 
brush out of this. Give it a, a name that may or may not mean anything. And we'll leave it on these settings. We're going to explore those settings in just a second. And apply our new brush to it. And that looks kind of cool. And adjust the size. And I like it. I really like the pattern brush. Because the more patterns you add, the more impressive it gets, yet with very little effort. And check this out. We only have one, two, three, four, five circles and no vector points that are taking up an incredible amount of memory. All right, quickly, let's explore some of those settings on the pattern brush. Uh, we've got some very uh, neat options here where you can flip across and you can see that it changes it along the path there. You can flip it along the path and you'll get different looks there. Um, this could be very useful um, depending on what you're going for. You can add space to fit and adjust the spacing and you'll see that it no longer touches. Um, and so there's pretty cool options there. Um, but we'll stick with what we have here. Uh, let's choose this one real quick and look at the options there. Because I think we might get some cool effects if we flip along or flip across. So you can see how you've got a ton of options there um, to improve your designs if you choose. Uh, let's go ahead and start working towards making this more of a design rather than just a pattern. I'd like to make this into a square. So draw my square there and I'm going to select all of these and make a clipping mask out of it. Clipping mask make and then I'll choose the actual clipping mask and give it a stroke make it about eight yeah, that's a good thickness uh, for what I'm looking for and then I'm going to add these design elements straight from set 8 decorative 2 these of them and place them onto the square and now that's looking more like we are designing this uh, rather than just creating a random pattern um, and I'm starting to like that even more okay this is useful and I've done the design in solid black and white so that we can focus on the design aspects of it uh, but now it's time to add some color to it and we can't do that very easily um, in this mode at least not to the degree that I would like to um, so we're going to actually expand our brushes uh, so that we can have full control over adding color So I'm going to go to object 
expand appearance and now you can see that we have hundreds and hundreds if not thousands of vector points here and each one you can go in and choose individually if you'd like um, or just start finding uh, what you would like to add color to and then you can start uh, doing some really nice looking design work um, with all the options that you have here and the ability and the, the flexibility to choose different elements so after staring at this thing for several hours now I've finally come up with a colored pattern that I actually enjoy um, but I want to show you something that's pretty cool in the new CS3 they've got this color palette and you could spend hours like I have unfortunately done changing up the color patterns and previewing what they will look like um, with different themes um, so that was impressionism I can choose prehistoric whatever foods let's see what this would look like if it were ice cream mm, that's pretty delicious so you get the idea of um, how fun this could be and time consuming uh, but I decided to stick with these very familiar colors with a very familiar type artwork okay um, then what I decided to do was create an illustration of a figure um, to throw in here and for this one I have an image of Jesus and I did the drawing using steps from a previous Go Media tutorial um, on drawing beautiful vector images and if you follow the steps in that tutorial you can come up with a similar uh, image there um, and then I added some decorative elements um, straight from the currency set on the Go Media Arsenal uh, to give myself this nice little design around the edges and I felt like for one last touch I needed something up here and so I added this gorgeous looking swirl at the top from also the Go Media Arsenal. This one came from set 8. <laughs> 